<laughs> All right, Angela Cabo is going to talk about the uprising behind the robot store, or why one-on-one -on -one attention is crucial for us. To if there is a fundamental truth about humans, it is this. All people, regardless of race, gender, or creed, love robots. <laughs> and if you build robots, they will come. Hundreds, in fact, come each month to Liberty Street Robot Supply and Repair, which is fantastic because this is also the home of 826 Michigan. 826 Michigan is a nonprofit writing and tutoring center for students ages 6 to 18, and it is conveniently located at the back of the robot store behind the velvet curtains. Every day, people wander in and say, so what is this place? And that opens the door for the store clerks to enthusiastically explain 826's free programming for students. But having a robot store at the back of your, uh, at the front of your tutoring center is sneaky in another way. Like I said before, all people lo love robots, and children are in fact people. <laughs> so there's no stigma attached. They don't have to go to tutoring. They get to go to the robot store. But in addition to tutoring, um, 826 has a lot of programs, including creative writing workshops. And as one of the resident grown-ups there, I was particularly excited for a series of workshops about a boy wizard who shall remain nameless. Um, not just because I didn't have this class, but because the class was very, very full, which is really exciting. Uh, people also love boy wizards, if you didn't know. <laughs> so for those of you who don't have kids, um, you may not know this, but I want to make you aware. Children are very powerful. It all happened so quickly. One minute they were making name tags and talking about spells, and the next they had a king, and he had amassed an army, and he had convinced everyone that the instructor and the concept of wizardry and writing itself was stupid. So among the uh, positronic brains and the bot lover at the Wondrous Robot Store, there was an all-out rebellion that prompted the instructor to ask the students if they even wanted to be there. And the king promptly and willfully answered, nope. And the rest of the army answered in kind until one sympathetic young soul said, um, maybe? Um, lucky for us, though, the instructor is brilliant. And he ran, revamped the workshop on his feet, creating a very happy group of children. <laughs> uh, but let's get back to the king, because it is his story that is important. Our program director gently set him aside to try to convince him to do some writing and allow the other students to do some as well. And she noticed that when he walked away from the table, he had a limp and a slight tremor in his hand. And the fact of the matter was the workshop was physically intimidating for him. It wasn't that he doubted his creativity or intelligence. It was that putting a pen to paper was more difficult for him than it was for the other students, something nobody would have noticed if not for the one-on-one -on -one attention given to him. I want you now to think about the most profound moments you've had in school. Think about when you chose your resume, um, your, uh, forget that. Think about when you first realized you loved your field of study. I'm willing to bet that a big part of these memories have to do with a teacher who took a special interest in you. Writing is my passion, but know that you can replace it with reading or arithmetic or science and make a similar case. Writing is critical to success in school and success in life. In any class a student will have from elementary to graduate school, he will be required to write thoughtfully, concisely, accurately, and informatively. To get a job, he or she will have to fill out an application, prepare a resume, and construct a cover letter in a more compelling manner than all the other applicants. This skill is critical. But let's step back from writing as a skill to be mastered. Writing is an essential way we as humans communicate. It is not only vital that we be able to transfer our thoughts and ideas in a way that someone else can understand. It is an essential means of self-expression. How many of you keep a diary or journal? How many of you keep love letters? How many of you use email or Twitter or Facebook to keep in touch with friends and relatives you otherwise couldn't? And how many of you would kill for letters or diaries written by your grandparents or great-grandparents? I beg you to write your story because you never know who it might inspire. Writing is an historical record of our lives. 
It is fundamental then that we spend time with our students one-on-one, -on -one, guide them, listen to them, and help them to their goals and ambitions. I implore you to be that person to a student, whether your own or by volunteerism, and I strongly advise that you be kind to both kids and robots because no one wants to be responsible for the real uprising. Thank you.